Hi, and welcome to After Hours with Bo and Tammy right here on These Changing Times Radio at thesechangingtimesradio.ning.com. We are a listener-supported radio station. Whenever you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.thesechangingtimesradio.ning.com and click on our support buttons. Every little bit helps. How are you, Bo? Hey, 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 hey. So we just decided to throw this together because it's been a heck of a week and we can't fit everything into the shows anymore. Oh, no. I mean, it won't, we won't even be able to fit, like, the filler in here because it's so over the top, really, what's going on behind the scenes. And I wish we had our own house of scribes and stuff, but this is pretty much just a three house show with uh, one of them behind bars being held as a, you know, basically a political prisoner. Right. At we and Dears Rocco. Robert, Richard, House of Larson, Henry County, and yeah, I'm on, I think, season three, late in season three with the this Clone Wars, just for some uh, mind wash and stuff, and <laughs> they got this Jedi prison, I, you know, see him like shocking him with the super shockers, and then I picture Rockle there, it's sad. He's, he is, he's yeah. really like, um... We know he's safe, you know? Jesus, Jedi. Yeah, and we, and we know he's well now. Um, things have been occurring this week that are just absolutely uh, profound, you know? And, and today, <laughs> Kevin Drake, the, the um, one of the uh, attorneys in black dresses up in Oceana County, had Maintain a lien, another one on a public vessel, which is Bonnie. She's under the house of Jonathan, and um, it, it was a funny, funny, funny day. The um, Michigan State Police uh, got on with me and said they have their big boy pants on. He's there. Throwing yeah, that's why I did the show, by the way, folks. Yeah, it was it was a, a interesting evening, and um, so. State police have their big boy pants on, and, um... Oceana yeah, so here, here it is. It's like almost 3 a.m. Right. And, you know, the Mitchell, the Daniels imposed time zone that, you know, he has basically allocated us due to his supreme divineness ship. It allows another hour of productivity. It's just like you do for chickens in the winter. If you want them to lay eggs, you so give we, them more Yeah, sunlight. we take advantage of the productivity. we got this extra hour here now. <laughs> of course, it's farming. in the next six months, you know, we'll have an hour less to get our shit done. So bear with us if we don't get one of these reports out. I don't know. I want of course, to that's ridiculous on its day. face. You might want to start talking about your uh, 13-month calendar, too, because, you know, the authority is shifting, and a lot of things are occurring that um, have been crazy, and, uh, you know, starting at, like, the 24th this week, I contacted law enforcement, and I said, you know what, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we got to get rid of... Southern Poverty Law Center, and then within two, three days, the FBI is dropping the Southern Poverty Law Center as a authority for research and a go-to guy, as well as ADL, and, and um, things are really happening quickly, and I, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can, but a lot of these things, you know, we're so involved in these things that, you know, it's, it's I've been writing forever, it seems, and... and it's like, yes, and studying and researching and looking things up and looking at all kinds of their stupid, crazy ass statute shit. Right, but it, it's all worth it. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just it's time consuming, and we don't have not only enough time to update, but then the ability to update on some things because of what's going on. You know, these 
dealing with the insurance now and everything else and having everything facilitated and then today when uh, Drake had law enforcement at one of the properties. Well, let's go ahead and set up the whole scenario the best we can because we're not given a fair representation of the account on the this uh, act perpetuated by the entities that are essentially under Congress right so that that are attempting to use a John Riley an attempt of piracy to gain access to Joseph Reynolds house right that was his house until the point he died his wife which is still alive is to be a tenant for the remainder of her life as per his will right and now, John fast Riley forward, there's some more holes to fill in here, but John fast Riley forward. John got her out of the house this last summer. He moved Suzanne. And in that, what, what had happened was, um, at that time, they had they'd housed Joseph Reynolds in a hospital setting. And then um, they kept him there. And then all of a sudden, Suzanne and Joseph Reynolds, they were doing okay. Well, then they took Suzanne and put her down in Indiana from northern Michigan, moved him, her all the way away from him. And this is a married couple. They've been married for 20-some years. And This is for uh, some special medical treatment? Right, no, no, no. This is when um, uh, uh, the attorney, David Johnnies, beat him up the first time. Oh, right. And they said that he fell down, and he didn't break any bones. He had black eyes and a broken nose. Well, then, fast forward now, they move Suzanne. So then Joseph follows her. He runs away from the uh, housing unit they had him in, of course, because they own their own freaking home and, and all of these things. And this is before September. Um, by the time they got him in September, I mean, I've got pictures that David Donnie's just killed him really swiftly um, by directives of corporate counsel. And um, so the actor since 2010 was John East, David John East. But then he got John Riley to act on his behalf because John Riley is a psychopath and it's easy to push a psychopath. And the way that they pushed him was they presented him with a quick claim deed, but it was a quick claim deed, uh, an estate by the entirety. You can see this guy in a video called Ang Angry Riley. Right, I was passing it around today anyway. Um, I, I just, it boggles my mind. So, this stepson of Joseph never had any access to the estate. This is Joseph and his prior wife's estate. She passed away. And um, so he does a quick claim with Suzanne that says she's a tenant for her lifetime in that home. After her lifetime ends, then the estate reverts to his heirs just like he and his first wife had agreed to that was their family home so john riley's presented this quick claim and apparently david johnny's and jay burroughs the other attorney told john riley that he had access that he was an heir and so he's been running around and he helped facilitate the death of joseph reynolds um everybody who listens to the show knows what happened that was in december uh we were on the scene the the judge was there which is of course you uh you were witness to a majority of what was going on because you were back and forth uh, visiting with joseph reynolds at that time along with uh, other members of the house of all or uh jonathan and this is not even a month uh a month and 10 days after they killed your mother and so all you know th this is half of the stuff you know that that we don't speak about on the air because it's just it's overwhelming. Every a lot of it day. is though on the old Revolution Radio archives. Right, but as we went along, you know, and and every day we've been sidelined with there's this going on, somebody's killing somebody here, and somebody's stealing somebody's kids here, and it's like it never ends until recently, and then all of a sudden everything kind of uh, just screeched to a halt. <clears throat> Rocco is okay. Uh, we can't say much around that, but Rocco is okay. Um, things are really happening, and, and um, today what happened 
we said uh, Kevin Drake had maintained a lien on Bonnie, so then we sent our law enforcement in the Kevin Drake's a judge. Right. Kevin Drake is an attorney on black dress. He's not a judge. Well, yeah. Title judge. We evidence in our case there are no judges. Right. right. And I never called him anything in the insurance claims. So you don't have to. It's an insurance claim. So he puts a lien on Bonnie. He maintains a lien, um, which is, of course, a warrant. And so... Um, they get the sheriff out there and they get uh, the state police and that's the conversation that I had with the state cop. But in the meantime, here, John Riley uh, starts assaulting Bonnie. Well, Bonnie is just little itty bitty. She weighs about 120 pounds. She's just this little lady, but she's a little spitfire. So John Riley starts roughing her up and grabbing her. She's the her lady in that video with the angry Riley. Right. The lady in the little dress and that's her. the little hat. That's Bonnie. And um, she's just a little bit of nothing. And he's an effeminate male, so he's used to getting his way. He's used to pounding on females. He's used to being violent and, and getting what he wants. Well, today when he was assaulting her, she turned around and busted his nose for him. And he ended up on the ground crying like a, a girl. And um, screaming, hooping and hollering, because it was all a presentation for these. Well, we have yet to see that she broke his nose, but his nose was bleeding, right? Right. Right, so uh, I'm hoping, anyway. <clears throat> well, it's been ridiculous because he's such a psychopath, you know. Oh, he's just, yeah, he's hideous. So our law, law enforcement is on the ground. Their law enforcement is on the ground. Everybody's, you know, going around in circles, and there's an order from this court and an order from this court and all of these things going on. Well, our order one out. The, the cops, um, they facilitated what they needed to, but they pointed the finger at Kevin Drake and the local sheriff. Um, they was, confirmed everything that we're saying about the attorneys pulling the strings. Right. And it was just, it was beautiful. So You got that on tape, right? Absolutely. I've got it on both recorders. Um, I was worried about the battery going dead, so then I have it on two different Recorded. Well, that's fine, but we'll so yeah, so that'll we'll be able to be released into a YouTube video at some point. Yeah, yeah, I've got to edit it because I talk, you know, on a personal level with law enforcement regarding the the insurance and everything else as well. And um, so uh, let's see what, what. Okay, this is when the um, Michigan State Patrol tells me he's a big boy, and he's following a, a lawful order and everything else. But he's the one that points the finger at Kevin Drake, which is cool, because I needed the name, right? So I can put it through to his insurance, too. Yeah. Then, um, right after that, so the, we're talking to this sheriff deputy out there in Oceana County. And the sheriff's deputy says, uh, we said, well, why aren't you arresting John Riley for assaulting Bonnie? And he says, I can't. The prosecuting attorney told me to only arrest Bonnie, not anybody else. So here's the directives. Here's this. And you'll hear it in the audios. This uh, officer is so innocent. He's just, he's, um, his head is filled up with something else. He didn't hear anything that I said. I said, look, you're going to be used as a fall guy and everything else. And that's what he just turned off. And, and you know, it's like that, uh, la, 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 I can't hear you mindset. But, um, but that also evidences that he's being maintained as a puppet by a puppet master. And, of course, now the puppet master was exposed, one of them, as Aaron Fisher, so then she came in and um, is uh, going to be discharging congressional bankruptcy uh, probably around Wednesday, so, and then, um, I don't know if anybody's watching, I mean, it's just been so profound, that attorney out in California, that uh, that is my new favorite, second, or, you know, my second favorite is the one that was shot in both legs and, and called a bank robber. I think the third one was that attorney that was robbing gas stations out east. And, and um, it just keeps getting better and better. Another senator was charged with uh, sexual f assaults. Um, it's just, oh, 300 Chinese. What was that one earlier we were talking about? But you wanted to bring some things up, too. We just wanted to kind of catch everybody up and... and um, it's just, it's been, it's just overwhelming here. Yeah. It has been. And, um, I believe the song goes, 
what a uh, what a uh, strange ride it's been. Right. It is absolutely trucking. strange, weird. Oh, I'll have to play that next. I have trucking on my uh, hard drive there. I'll have to play Hey, that I don't next. even know if they're... They're awake on TCT chat, so I don't know if they know they're on, that we're on or not, but I just sent them a message. I don't know. I didn't check. Maybe nobody's but, listening. Yep, they're Maybe it's chatting chance. there, and that's in the private Skype, but I think TCT's got, like, their own right. chat there, too, right? Right. Which we're probably not on right now. No, no, I never sign in because I forget about signing in and I forget about all of those things, but um, you can join the, t uh, the Changing Times radio.name.com if you want to join the chat or, or anything else or um, send us a message through the site. Um, of course, we can't look at it or take any calls. Yeah, that's thanks to me. That's <laughs> we, can take, to what, me. We, we can't take a Skype call either? We can take a Skype call, can't we? We can. We just have to record it on a different venue because it oh, will go through oh, the okay, yeah. Sam's. And that's all. Yeah, our computer. Me, you know, our retard. computer tech part department is just underfunding. So our staff is down to zero. <laughs> our secretarial staff is down to zero. Um, it's just really brutal here right now until this, some of this um, yeah, funding um, comes back our way. But oh, was they just like part. to wait us out as long as they can and make us pay. Well, not this time, because uh, what happened was Kevin Drake did a, an insurance claim. Like, How dare you stand up to yeah. the oligarchs? Yeah, so Drake, when he put a lien on Bonnie, he made the insurance claim. Well, I had already made the insurance claim on behalf of the United States. And um, so one of us is going to be picked up for bank fraud, insurance fraud, and bankruptcy fraud. And I know it, you know... I, I'm here speaking the truth, and, and I'm not the one in the um, criminal confederacy, so um, that's where we're at now, everybody, uh, <coughs> as the clerk, I maintain as the surety on any bond, so that my estate backs everything that, uh, everything that I write on behalf of you, and that's how it's always going to be. Um, the clerk is the only dead thing, the clerk is the only fiction. And that's what Jesus said. So, uh, there we go. We've got so much. I'm just, I'm tired. It's Saturday night, and I'm, like, tired now. But we need to update. Do you want to talk about that attorney in California this week? Because that's my favorite one. It oh, we covered that enough on the okay. show the other day. And then I did a video on it before oh, that. Oh, so funny. Yeah, that... That gal, that gal is just uh, off the hook. So She's off the cuff, man. She was a radical, crazy-ass attorney bitch. On that one. Give me some cocaine. Yeah. She sounds like, she sounds like that guy on uh, the so, clown on Metalocalypse. Yeah, the... Give me some cocaine. What was his name? The heavy metal clown or something. That's yeah, another thing about the judge in L.A. Judge Cook was charged. Yeah, and um, adjudicated. He got 24 two. months, yeah. They didn't want yeah. to take his plea bargain of 18 months. Yeah, you didn't yeah. want to take the plea. The judge um, over the case, right? anyways, didn't want to. So, yeah. you know, the judge is making t two two 24 years. months. And then, mm. now what's going to happen to him behind bars? That's More what than you got to wonder. Forget, everybody's forgetting about the judge that was killed during that excursion when he was... Uh, and playing with his whole, um, heroin and cocaine and all that stuff. The other judge ended up dead in his house. Yeah. With him there. So right. That's got to be. I'm waiting for it. It'll be a really need, good presentation. There was some, you know, I don't know, evidence that suggested it in the write-up of the story. But, I mean, they would need somebody <coughs> that had the direct, some sort of evidence that he actually killed him. Right, well, he was there, and he's a judge. He's an attorney in a black dress. It's almost guaranteed that uh, he off the other guy. That's that's the probably more guy. probable cause than an expired license plate, right? right. That, that, the, that that old guy got shot for the other day. Right, but there's more. The um, That judge had only been in office for, like, just a short amount of time when this killing occurred or this death occurred. So really watch that one, folks, because it'll... It'll be an interesting storyline. 
especially to see if he is charged with some kind of uh, murder. Under the public law, we don't have different degrees. You can't kill anybody a little bit, um, rape anybody a little bit. There's no uh, none of that first degree, second degree, whatever. If you harm, you harm. And um, it, it's been an interesting ride. So many right, problems. yeah, so many of the problems, let's see, that are the, the center focus of all these TV programs they would all go away under the public law right. there there would be no need for all of this well you know they wouldn't be able to have all these tv shows i guess right. but you know i mean the problems would solve themselves oh you violated public law okay then we know how to handle this right right you know five seconds later well, I mean, if, a, if a cop was right there to witness it you know? and that was a sheriff beauty. we should that say was a, a real sheriff right. not a fake no, corporate sheriff right and and talking to law enforcement in the last few days um at one point law enforcement thanks us plural for what we're doing and um oh yeah there's that, actually people <laughs> that are in law for enforcement that continue to read and educate themselves and you know Thank the good Lord for that, I guess. Thank well, goodness. You know how much I talk. I mean, I, I'm always talking, and, and at that moment in time, I was absolutely, absolutely speechless because of just the... They don't come back and tell you you're wrong, and you send them all the information, so... Right. The well, and that's what The thing is today. that they read the information, and they educate themselves, and they, they see for themselves how, you know, this has got to go back to the uh, sheriff and the um, bishop. Right, and, and that's another thing that happened today was um, Robert Farber, I had spoken to him uh, through email back in 2010 when the Southern Poverty Law Center was attempting on um, uh, Phil. Was it 2010 or no, 2012? I think it was 2012. Anyway, so at that time, I had spoken to him. Well, then today again, you know, I get an email out to him because I'm like, you know what? You are being maintained as a fall guy, and everything has been like it, it's just profound. At that point in time, that's when law enforcement left, you know, and then, um, of course, the, the uh, big boy there with the uh, state police showed up, but it has been just. I don't know how to explain it, Bo, because things are just happening too quickly. And Yeah, well, we're getting more proficient at uh, filing these insurance claims now since we've gone to the end of the road. That's all we have to do now. We don't have to write big, you know, um, answers to these attorneys and right. get it uh, on the record in their courts and all that crap that we went through to get to this point. Right. Now we just say, okay, we got the evidence of this. Uh, let's get into the insurance claim. Right, that's it. Um, you know, so the dominoes are starting to fall on that. So this is coming down to the apex. Uh, let's see here. Anna is going on about the 777 airplane flight. Uh, oh, what's the number on that again now? It's M been drilled into my brain M so many times I forgot it. 370 M's 370 or something. Yeah, flight 370. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, we you were, were just gonna. You, you said you were gonna watch the uh, uh, Superman. Um, yeah, I was watching that. Show. I never saw anything. It, it, it's real quick, you it know. And that's be. why it's just on YouTube, I think, right. where they captured the uh, momentary uh, glimpses of the top of the tractor trailer truck that said MIA six, and yeah. then. What's the rest of the number? Um, M three seventy or something. God, I'm not, I'm blacking it out now. Yeah, it said six three seventy M I A six three seventy six. As we know, is the number that they claim uh, the Bible says is the number of man. Right, and and that's actually if you look at corporate council, the big wigs, there's less than a thousand members and. Um, on the Association of Corporate Council, you know, the, the actual big membership of the big guys is 1,666, something around in there. Um, of course, the 1,666 
Sister K by actor. And that would be a number because if you are using a fiction, if you are using or assuming a fiction, you're you're dead. That's what it says in Genesis as well. It says if you eat of the tree of knowledge with your concepts, this is why you die. You're gonna experience life and death. And that's what civil death is. You've abjured the the realm. You've left your Yeah, and all these people going through all this shit with the courts, CPS, child custody, mortgage, um, Dead you know, uh, uh, evictions, um, foreclosures, uh, student debt, um, credit card defaults, you know, all this stuff, they have, you know, they've basically uh, declared you civilly dead. That's it. You've abjured the realm. They're, they're declaring you a felon under 18 U.S.C. 1342, saying you're assuming and using a, a fiction. And uh, now you're a felon, and, and that's how you abjure the realm. You are a felon, and in that state, they're holding you a taint by felony, and, and you can see that in mortgage documents, in um, CPS, in adult protection. And then out of corporate counsel's own mouth, his own mouth. And, and that's the most profound is that we don't have, you know, it, it doesn't look like there's that many views, but I've watched it go from zero views and five likes to you know one view and oh five the, likes that, the, yeah that calendar on youtube is all jacked now it's just all crazy whack I, I don't be. even pay attention to it anymore okay. whatever i don't even care you know i mean likes dislikes whatever whatever well, that. floats it around the corporate council did admit that yes in but, order for him to offset you know you gotta consider with the level of production they've had in the past, anyways. The production to not have a plane. I mean, think about it. All they had to do is have some kind of evidence somehow that a plane took off. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. And with the level of production that they were able to carry out Fighting back that. in 2001. Yep. Right. You, you know, to, to carry on a production with. No, no kind of video footage, whatever, right. to dispute. Right, it's like it's simple. It's like I've been saying. It's like it the, might have not even existed. No, and it didn't. When you look at the presentation, but, it's like the difference between the uh, production of the Titanic and Sanford and Sons. You know, it's like you, you all of a sudden you went to the B-list movie and and um, you know, look at all the okay. Explain crap. how they move. Uh, Hitler's people out in the same manner during World War Two, and, and maybe it, folks will and get and that because you tell that story pretty well. It, it's still ongoing, you know. If you read the book, it's called uh, "Psychiatrists and Men Behind Hitler." You see the actual movement of these psychiatrists. Attorneys didn't make it out of Nazi Germany. Businessmen didn't make it out of Nazi Germany. Those are the overhead. These are the people on corporate welfare. Maintaining under state employee or federal employee. And so all of these entities that you heard about were all the overhead. Citizen is never really the overhead because it produces nicely. Well, in that book particularly, and what was most interesting is that, you know, of course the eugenics program itself started here. Um, part of the uh, Vienna Circle, Nietzsche, all of them up to... Um, Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger, Sanger was a eugenicist, so the, the founder of Planned Parenthood. That followed through to Nazi Germany. It was a great means of, of uh, depopulation and, and keeping the population the way that they wanted it. But the psychiatrists are integral in any war because they're the ones that are on the ground diagnosing. Psychiatrists were transferred over to the American administration, specifically to Ernst Rudin. And that is what facilitated the world of psychiatry we know today as it grew and grew. And then they threw Freud in there, then they threw Carl Jung in there. Well, Carl Jung, you know, I used to look up to uh, Jung in theory, you know, and, and um, learn behavior and all of this crap. It's social engineering. It, it is learned behavior, but it's actually social engineering, human behavior modification. And... Um, in the arguments that he had with Freud, who was his teacher, um, these arguments, they're, they're more relative to the Catholic diocese and 
uh, Martin Luther, when they were fighting in the, the um, disagreements between the Lutheran doctrine, still the same Catholicism, still the same monster, still the same um, psychopaths running the show. It just has a different flavor now. So now instead of Catholicism, we call it Lutheranism. And it, but it's the same monster, and, and it was the same with Freud and, and Jung and going all the way back to Galen. I don't know where I was going with that rant. Yeah, well, Galen, that's kind of a bad taste in my mouth right now, still a stain on the name, if you will. He's not in the house of all stuff. He's on his own. He's a fiction out there. Whatever floats his boat. He took a retirement, he was bought off, and he gets to uh, go by way of surety. Sadly. Okay, yeah, I... Yeah, I really uh, had to elaborate on that. It's just that I have a attorney in the family, basically the uh, summary of that. Oh. So... You know, get to the point, though, about how they, they oh, moved disappeared people. them right. with, with airplanes, probably back in World War right. II also. Right, yeah, Ernst Rudin, he disappeared from the Nazi administration, and all of a sudden, poof, he's in the American administration. And they did the same thing with the um, Prime Minister Brown over there in the U.K. They moved him over into the American Banking Administration after he got out of the U.K., and, and, and a lot of people had cast out on his name and all, all these things they just shift people around and we saw that on a low uh, level with your ex-wife when we went after the attorney general she was the um, administrative legal assistant to the attorney general at the time we um, evidence that she was in the action of hostage taking and and demanding ransom uh, kidnapping and all of these things well, they just cleaned their hands and they said get, they got rid of her, right? So first she was on administrative leave, then she lost her job, then they shuffled her over into um, what's it called, the Western Dairy Association, which is the same. It's an it's an extension of, you know, Denver politics. So it really doesn't do anything. They just look like they're cleaning their hands or look like they're trying to um, move away from her, and it was just a political. Uh, PR campaign to uh, make us back down and so we pretended to back down and of course behind the scenes we're playing and, and um, garnering evidence which has been interesting and um, you know again now we're working backwards on these uh, insurance claims and it's been very interesting to see the actual algorithm of the Pyongyang project itself um, you know, I didn't realize that you know when a when an incorporated state calls something its sister state or its sister city, it's actually relying on the productivity of that sister state, sister city. Um, we found that uh, accidentally by charging people um, these entities in like Illinois, and then all of a sudden somebody's picked up in New Hampshire or somebody's picked up in in uh, one of the thirteen colonies, and, and um, it's been interesting. New Hampshire's really hit hard. Uh, Oklahoma, uh, a couple weeks ago, but was complaining that Oklahoma, you know, was was extremely corrupt. And since then, they've been cleaning house. It appears like they're cleaning house anyway. What do you think? Well, I know that police chief came back later and said that maybe he spoke too soon on the um, justification of that shooting. Good. So... I mean, that's just lip service, though. I mean, come on, someone needs to be charged for that. This guy, he, you know, had uh, basically lost his job at the State Police Department for uh, shooting dogs and, and one, you know, person fatally. And then, you know, Oklahoma, the uh, Sheriff Department there, I believe, um, hired him and said that he wouldn't have a badge and a... Uh, gun <laughs> obviously looking down the barrel of that rifle he had both <coughs> right. so was... what is his status right now is he, is he charged or is he on leave or what are they playing with now uh, really the last information I looked at it's, it's 
on the uh, video. I haven't uh, looked at anything new since then. Yeah, today was busy. Holy cow. I could pull that up in my channel and give you better information. I don't think it was. It wasn't uh, Sheriff that he moved to be. We moved to the state police to Albuquerque. I think probably, um, maybe it was Sheriff. I, I don't know. But he wasn't to be carrying a gun or a badge. Yeah, why? And he was he... there, the first shooter. Right, that's sick. And so that is a murder charge no matter what. I mean, looking at that scope, I mean, I would have never started shooting at the guy. The guy, you know, showed no evidence that he was going to be uh, taking any of them out. And then would they find him with a, a knife? Right. Oh, a couple knives right. or something? And this has been, this has been rapid. Jesus all Christ, that. I mean, that you know, the predetermination policy by these attorneys has been to shoot first and ask questions later. But they've been allowed to get away with this by humanity. Humanity has dehumanized homeless people. They've dehumanized those that are diagnosed well, with The media psychiatry. hasn't helped, you know, right? with, you know, presentations like Judge Dredd. Right, but, you know, it, it does have to fall Matlock and on, shit. on the human because we're we're all the same. We're not different colors. We're not different uh, classifications. We can't be weighed and measured by value or things. And these things should not be even um, conceived of by the human mind. This is disgusting. Oh, we're going to see a lot of stuff going on here pretty soon, though. Um, because... 300 in, in China in the last month. In a corruption scandal. Okay, yeah, go ahead guy. and, and uh, detail that out for the people if you want. Uh, it's just been profound. Let me bring it up. I think I've read. I mean, I mean, just on the timeline here, we have what's listed at McHenry County as far as Rocco Santos, the same um, April Fool's Day court date on Tuesday. What's gonna happen? What's it gonna be? What's yeah. you gonna do? Yeah, it's all a presentation. <coughs> oh man, I can't. This by this Halloween for sure, I should have. You know, I'll either have the funds to produce the way I want to that 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 song that includes that phrase. What's you gonna do? Right. Or or I'll be in jail, or I'll be dead. Wow. And if I'm in jail, I'll be in a, you know, as a political prisoner because I've never violated the public law ever. And, you know, if I'm dead, it's just because your sheep are just going to take it. Right. And, and, that, and that's what's, you know, I, I, and, um, you know, this last week it's been funny with, um, you know. I mean, you, you can decide funny. either your private acts and acts of commerce or the public law. Right. I mean, I mean, there's no plan B really in that. Right. Right, and that, and there's not purgatory for the public law. Right, right. They're, they're, that's, that's not an option. You're either alive, be living, or you're dead. And um, that, that's the bottom line. You know, we've got, you know about my shoe rooms. I fill them up with all these, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's the uh, going thing. You know, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Well, I wasn't exactly sure what's going to happen. However, it's written in the Bible what's going to happen if I follow a certain um, path. It, it's very narrow. Or the, the path is wide. I could go bouncing all over wherever. But the gate is narrow. And, um, you know, when I, when I was handed these things by the insurance... Um, I realize that they're the eye of the needle, and everything, regardless of what it was in the last, I'm 37 now, and I've never had peace. It made everything just worth everything. It doesn't matter what I've gone through, because when I, uh, when I got these things, um, it's just profound. They were not just trafficking human beings. They were not just perpetrating genocide against human beings. These acts that Congress is maintaining are 
their policies, their insurance policies, and their guarantees. Which means to kill many. How many times do I got to tell you that? Right. But, <laughs> and, and that's exactly what it is. As they took out policy. the insurance policy. But as Let's get out, good policy and good Congress in here to take care of us and kill us all quickly. Right. As they took out those insurance policies, they that's how they killed the human beings. So they would go in there and you would go into court and consent to their jurisdiction and do whatever mortgage, deposit yourself in one of their banks or in a hospital. So the court would turn around and make a claim against your insurance, against your life insurance. And this has been happening since the 14th Amendment that declared the corporation a living being. And so... Under Lincoln, who was the first Dun & Bradstreet reporter. Right. That was the president. Well, yeah. He was the first president listed as a Dun & Bradstreet reporting reporter. Right. But maybe the other presidents were, like, reporting behind the scenes a little bit anyway. Oh, there was a few of them because, um, well, it followed... That's just a side issue, though. I mean... Garfield and Taft. Yeah, later on. So what these insurance things are is killing human beings. On the flip side, now that the insurance is in our hands, we're killing them as they killed the lamb. And, and that's, you know, I, I don't know how to explain the um, overwhelming situation we are in because like that with that one attorney they're not going to shoot him in the chest they're going to shoot him in both legs right so he can become injured, injured. like we've all been being injured right. forever and ever and, and he starts as they only got to, to the end of this two years to quit using that word injure for harm too because i'm right. sick of that right and as a stock option that attorney who's been shot the new surety and charged with bank robbery um he gets to produce, and his insurance ran out. That's what those forms are. It, it says uh, it's a non-renewal of the policy. But each policy was by commission of Congress. And so the first commission is from the absolute treasury, the House of Lords treasury. It commissions Congress to protect humanity. Then Congress came in and said, well, heck, this looks like a good business schematic to me. And they entered into a confederacy in 1781 with the Articles of Confederacy. And for all you patriotic listeners out there, that should be prima facie evidence for you right there. That the, you know, the about the truth of the Declaration of Independence and its meaning that we've been teaching right. basically straight out of Black's Law. Right. You're in a pending state, and they're finding you. They're finding the vessel. Etymology, I should say, probably right. is a better Right. They're uh, finding you, and they're pulling your insurance. They're making a claim against your life insurance, saying, well, they're dead. Sorry. Oops. Yeah. Sorry just, about good... Good luck to you be there, right. civilly dead there. And um, this is so terrible, but I'm a good guy, and I'm going to hold on to this estate until one of the heirs might come along and, and claim it. Well, of course, the American population or the citizen has been indoctrinated by the education system. Oh, my God. To, so, to go into court and, and play. So, so many ways, too. They use the fourth generation well, warfare. You know, warfare back on in school great hearts and minds patriotic to your school right. you know football games and basketball cheerleaders rah 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 everything and they've altered the mind to the extent that you know human beings are now deemed ugly or scary or fat or whatever or poor or whatever classification there is always getting them to strive to be and you know strutting their stuff so to speak and then one with the title good basketball player you know oh boy here we go right and got it was that, actually, you know those years of fame and then the years of redistribution right and then 
it was actually a depopulation program um, because if you're taught to gravitate towards a psychopath, you're breeding and potentially breeding a psychopath or more because you're not evolving. And so they taught you a new vision of each other. They taught you concepts. Yeah, which means like to take your, um, you know, grab you, sept is grab kind of, is what right, that means. With, with grasping, concept, conceive, conceive, uh, what is that word? Um, conceit. You want to look up all of those in the etymology dictionary, but that is the ultimate depopulation schematic is... Now they have soap operas and they have television programming showing human beings the psychopath and calling it sexy. They're calling it beautiful. They're calling it what you want. And so you're not evolving. You're breeding with something that doesn't have a frontal lobe. And so there's a 50% chance that you are going to throw which is a breeding term, a psychopath. But if you were together with another human, then you evolve. You become better and better and better and better. But that has been impeded by legal process, medical, psychological. Um, you've got all of these variants brought upon you through fourth-generation warfare by Cro-Magnon man, which is a psychopath. They don't have a frontal lobe. They're not the evolved species. And you are as Neanderthal, and you've been taught all of these perverted... Actually, the correct pronunciation these days is Neanderthal. Yeah, Neanderthal. Um, it's just been found, you know, in all of these diagnoses, they're calling you crazy, they're calling you uh, disordered... Uh, you're calling yourself at disease or at discomfort, but it's all within the depopulation program. You're not touching each other. You're not loving each other. You're not doing anything that's actually human in nature or your natural state. You've been replacing human feelings with things, counting things, having things, keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, they're too busy out there fixing their old lady's car, the psychopath. Right. Leroy, you better get that car fixed! Right. And it, it's, it's she's kept you busy, hasn't she? I said I gotta go somewhere in about five minutes. You better have this thing working. Yeah. And it is. It's like that all the time, and she's getting you outside the home. Um... You moved outside the home thanks to the inflation rates, which... You're not working enough hours! You're not spending enough time with me! Yes, and it's it's called unreal expectations. You're not working enough. You're not spending enough time at home. And then eventually in the court, she's claiming that you abandoned the children because you work 60 hours a week to support the children. You know, these are these are not funny things. I know that they're funny to you right now, but they're not funny to me at home. It would make heart. a great comedy show for the sheep because they love this stuff, obviously. It's sick. They keep buying it. I mean, good times. It's sick. <laughs> Yes, good times, and, the, and then Sanford and Sons. And I've been yeah. watching that again lately, and it's so and sad. the musicology in there was just, it, it grabbed everybody hook, line, and sinker. I mean, they sad. loved it. You know, I was dancing around when I was like, you know, was however sad. young I was to listen to that show. But I love Sanford and Sons, and then I started watching it again lately, and it's like a full-on indoctrination. Oh, yeah, well, I... Psh. Sick. I used to think that uh, Married with Children was a nice, you oh know, comedy show. Oh, it's just <laughs> sick. And, and pretty soon I'm yelling at the, t you know, the the uh, computer because you can find it everywhere. And um, I, I don't know. It's just so foul what they've done and what they've perpetrated. Because I grew up, you know, loving Red Fox. I loved Red Fox. And yeah. there he is. He's just the ultimate, um, you know, beneficiary. He's the ultimate racist when it all comes down to it. Yeah, he, he was a black so George Car Carlin, you know. It was, um, what was her name? Just, An Ann Astor? Um, yeah, his yeah, the um, religious indoctrination. The religious indoctrination. Right, right. Horrifying. 
you know, and, and um, you know, uh, Lamont was always a bad boy, and all of his friends were bad boys, and all of these uh, religious aspects coming to play. Well, Lamont was the best of the bad boy friends, right? Oh, they just, but what were the bad boys? They were perpetrating commercial I crimes. Mean, Lamont was actually pretty slick, considered he grew up in a garbage yard. Hey, that's like Judge <laughs> Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown, he grew up in the hood. Look at what he did. Got arrested the other day. It's just funny that these presentations hey. are like oh, oh. cow. I mean, not only was he hypothecating human beings on TV for all to witness, but he was making it look good and making y'all look bad. Absolutely. Everybody's bad. a criminal, just like we said. Absolutely. We've been telling you, we got a bunch of criminals over there, House of Lord Obama says, or in his, uh, the way they call God. that, that uh, address. That has been the most profound because What's the, the name of that address, though, uh? Help me out State here. Of the State union. of the Union. Yeah. Oh, yeah. State oh, of the Union. That see? was hilarious. There's in your face what the word state means right there. State. Yeah. Obama. Come on. What state are we in? Right. And, and he says it. You know, this is, it's so bad. This is going on. This is going on. And the, the funniest part that uh, I haven't noticed anybody notice that. About a month and a half ago, the uh, federal state came in and said 650,000 Federal and state employees may not have passed their criminal background checks because of no! fraud, right? So, so in this, get this, so Obama gets up there at the State of the Union address and he says, you know, heck, I'm going to uh, guarantee all federal employees a wage of $10.10 an hour. And all of the citizens are looking at this, right? But if you go to, like, um, South Carolina, the minimum wage is still less than $3 an hour around there. Um, Washington State is, like, $10 an hour and, and other states. But Obama demoted all federal employees down to $10.10 .10 per hour. He sure made it sound good, though. Yes, he made it sound so beautiful. He's such a sick rat bastard. And um, these things are like, holy cow, since they lost their funding, they're demoting um, state and federal employees. And, and um, they're not going to come out and say, well, you're getting $10.10 .10 an hour now. They're going to come out and say, well, you've been charged with this, 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 and this. And they're going to take that out of the hide of the federal employee. And that's what we've been seeing. You know, senators... <clears throat> charged this one in um i found it today came across my news feed from al jazeera china seizes 14.5 billion dollars of ex-official assets illegal assets were seized from family members and associates of retired domestic security chief zhu yang kang Chinese authorities have seized assets worth at least $14.5 billion from family members and associates of retired domestic security chief Zhu Yangkang, who is at the center of China's biggest corruption scandal, scandal in more than six decades, according to a reduced news agency. More than 300 of Zhu's relatives, political allies, prodigies, and staff have also been taken into custody or question in the past four months sources who have been briefed on the investigation told Reuters this is amazing I'm like holy cow all right now break it down to me like I'm a fifth grader because I really bunch, am in my mind right, you know, anyways. Okay. so they got a bunch of politicians over 300 of them they seize assets up upwards of 14.5 uh, billion dollars um, those assets belong to the United States. Lowercase. Um, Lowercase. That's us, folks. Yeah. That's and, what I'm uh, talking about, the right, human beings. Right. These politicians have been in uh, commissioned states for a very long time, commissioned out of the Treasury, of course. And then Congress came in, and they commissioned their own little, you know, screw job -y job. The first taxing agency was the banks created by the 1789 Judiciary Act. 
they were supposed to be collecting taxes from corporations, which are core processes. Well, then, later on, they perverted that again and called it the IRS, which is the same thing. The um, original courts, the 1789 Judiciary Act, establish a bank routing system where everything that you do like you know and there's been no judges since that act by the right, way right it's just a bullshit game which we have evidence in our case right and that, and that's been the funniest thing because they were commissioned out of the treasury to be taking care of humanity and they weren't they were just embezzling and then and so all you people going to these judges for justice there's what you're getting right now does it you know is it any wonder now why right it's just it's sick so anyway, we've gone all the way backwards into time and, and um, you know, attach these things. Well, then, again, this week, the Southern Poverty Law Center, that was like, that's the best news I've ever Yeah, Southern time. Poverty Law Center and the ADL now, the FBI have dropped right, as their go-to source right, for and, who the terrorists are or whatever. Right, and it called it a domestic terror cell, which was... That is bang on to what we've been trying to say. These attorneys are domestic terrorists. All they do is terrorize people, uh, pit, polarize, and everything else. And now, you know, again, everybody's being held accountable. And it's, you know, it, it's such an amazing revelation. Did you want to say something, baby? Hmm? No. What, you got that damn cat over there? Yeah, he just wants to be petted. A damn cat. I tell you what, Co-host. He, he's he's a survivor. You say what you want about him, but he's a sovereign. He he yells at me. He gets me to clean out his box. He's the only one that can do that. I'm not going to clean up after others. Except for him. I hope he's not human. No, maybe he's a assassination cat. He tries to trip me when I'm walking through the house. Or well, I know you never would have taken that cat to the vet. No. Never ever. He's so amazing. That's like a license, you know, for uh, them to hypothecate on too. Is it for your animals? It's it, right. you know, they get you coming and going. These attorneys, right. and and what good do they do you? They get you um, on the hook for these commercial crimes. Absolutely, and not only that. How 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 slick is that? They tell you what to eat. They tell your pets what to eat, and then everybody. But that's all they do. They don't make, uh, you know, uh, free energy machines and stuff. No. They just count humans. Right. But the stuff that they tell us to eat makes us sick, you know. And, and cats now, human beings suffer from autoimmune disorders like uh, no, the hypertension, most. diabetes. And now cats do too because they're eating what the USDA provides. Or right. Provides. And the USDA is bad. Okay. Bad, bad. Yes, I probably forgot what I was going with that, but there's um, you know, definitely better methods of getting some of these things. Actually, the products of them for animals, as um, Rocco was um, you know, so knowledgeable about and to teach me that the uh, the horse MSM, for example, that you would get. Is 99 plus percent pure. Now the FDA stuff for humans is 90 percent pure. It says right. right on the damn label, right. not for humans because it's it's too pure. Right, it's the real stuff. <laughs> I take that stuff. I like it every once in Not for humans. They're not talking about human beings though. Right. So I buy it. Right. <laughs> I like the, the animal supply. I, know, it, I love Law of necessity, it, it might, you know, my, my joints are not as smooth working as they used to, so. And I like the shampoo, the yeah, mane and tail, too. It's concentrated. It, it helps the hair growth because of the protein sources in it and everything else. I really like that one. And I find that at uh, the uh, farm and feed. Yeah. But it doesn't leave your hair all weighed down and stuff, and it just it just cleans, like, you know, you know, like uh, a lot of uh, perfumes and crap. We're not supposed to smell like anything else, folks. We're supposed to smell like us. And um, covering our scent is, is part of the depopulation program. If you look at all of these products with musk in them and then go study musk, you'll find that... You, 
it, it's sick. Um, the uh, they use that musk out of the musk deer. So everybody who's attracted to that or to, attracted to perfumes, you're actually being attracted to animals. That's speciality, and we need to back away from all of these uh, fictional realms. Or whatever else. I mean, this, this is just sick. This is one big, long, ugly cartoon. Yeah. And when it figure that she used to wear the stinkiest shit ever, but. <laughs> but she was oh, hot. man, it was horrible. She was hot. I hated that she shit. Was hot. Hey, you know. Tight little body. Smelled like musk and smelled like perfumes. She was so damn sexy, right? I mean, these things are... That's what awareness brings. It allows you to hold her accountable rather than to uh, continuously buy into that. Now, that was my downfall. I mean, be, beginning of the... Um, hyper um hypothecation because before that i'd never been hypothecated too badly you know i tried to do stuff without banks as much as possible and i had just a uh you know a feel for the whole thing and debt as a mechanism of control before i really understood and you know studied learned about how you know deep the rabbit hole goes so to speak with the uh, enslavement here um just by this uh money mechanism but it's yeah it's you know to the point we're at now that the uh hypoth hypothecation is is just it, it's reality it exists we proved it you know okay do we want to keep consenting to it? And I don't know. I, got, I don't know more on that later. But we got some Do we Mark Stevens. Season? Mark Stevens is coming out with, oh, with yet another. Oh. Now it's the Canadian, oh. I believe it is. Let's see here. Um, this isn't the link I was looking at earlier. But, uh, oh yeah, Ontario AG spokesman now. Um, they're going, predicting the correct response to the COS from Canada. You know, it's the same thing. It's like, um, where's the authority of this law? What evidence do you have that this law applies to me is the question. Right. Which but they're bringing this question to who? Right, the authority. They're, they're asking somebody else to determine them. So if you're saying, oh, Judge Yipu, uh tell me how this applies to me. Please help me. Please represent me in some way. Please, 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 you know, let me stand in your glory and be under your jurisdiction. Just give me this one answer. Or, you know, Boris's process, going into the IRS, please tell me whether or not I'm alive. I really, I really need your help here. And you know, if if you want an example, what is that one South Park? What, my favorite South Park with Butters, and he converts everybody to worship the DMV. Oh yes, yes. It's, that's the one, and and um, you can find that at South Park Studios. I think it's dot com, but it's 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 just profound what all of these um, gurus. Is that the same with. one where Eric Cartman infiltrates the NSA? Yes, yes, that's the one. And and he's got so, the shitter. Yes, he's got a shitter. With him and the Alec Baldwin are the only ones on. Yes, and, and poor Butters, he's always like the innocent, naive human, and then you've got Cartman, who's a guy, staying psychopath, and and um, no, and. You know, back channel this last week. Um, you know how uh, the FBI it stays away from me for like you know weeks at a time, and then all of a sudden on the show I'll say, "Oh, I'm so tired," or or give them any indication that I'm I'm weaker than normal, and then all of a sudden they just bombard me in um, email and over the phone and Skype and Facebook and wherever else, and. Um, Again, I mean, this last week they've just been 
And, and I want to remind all of the listeners, if you send me something in capital letters, all capital letters, and then it includes a link to whatever you want to sell me, I'm not even going to read your... your yeah, all capitals is kind of offensive, oh, isn't it? You know, but, you know, on the other side of the coin, though, it's just cyberspace characters on, you know, CRT screens. Well, now it's... Um, um, crystal LED screens, but you know the same thing, only it's different. It's only a representation. Right. And I'll give it one chance and maybe read the information, but. Oh, I try. Yeah. They're trying to sell me it, this offensive OPP though. T stuff. They're trying to sell me this OPP. Right. Oh, capital OPPs. Right. <laughs> right. And then and then they're trying to uh, sell me all of these other concepts and they, and they don't get it and so they call and 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 I'm not going to answer you. I don't have any um thing to say. Uh, we did do a OPP video. Our OPPT video, our audio last year. It was in the springtime. And well, leave a, do leave a message on the voicemail, though, you know, where we can circle back around and follow up on this, you know, since it is a violation of our fee schedule. Absolutely. But don't try to sell me a, a, a court product because I'm not interested. Um, you know, and, and that's what that's what surprised all of these judges and all of these administrators and right we're more interested in the you know the big psychopaths right now and the little psychopaths will get um oh they'll be taken that's that's the well they already are starting to take them already but right. you know the ones that remain that 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 wiggle their way through the cracks they'll be picked up later this last week against that uh john riley we actually had a um entity and I won't say who it was but uh, this entity was actually in strategy and planning and uh, they ended up giving us evidence of, of certain criminal activity and normally you know they gain the other side so uh, giving us the advantage over a psychopath is, is always a good thing and it, it's nice to to be in that um, position for sure so Mark Stevens wants to say there is no state but see that is another difference between what he's teaching and the public law is that we're in that sovereign state right and in the sovereign states that everybody else are talking about defined wise 28 USC sub 6 is 1603 They've never been a sovereign state. They're not able to have sovereignty because they are acting under acts of commerce and private acts. And then they're they're go, evidencing themselves as citizens by going in there and, and asking them what authority they have. Hey, and infants, because if a if an infant goes into court and it patronizes... Right, law of infants. I, that's something I... I I blast that on my YouTube right. channel to these guys. Right. If, if they somebody, don't get it. If somebody's coming into court and they're saying, I'm alive, I'm alive, I want you a fiction to represent me, they're evidencing that they're an infant. It's like me, you know, going outside and, and saying I have an imaginary friend, this is my imaginary friend, and this is his authority. You want to see all of his imaginary badges and imaginary stripes? Because that's exactly what an attorney is. It's an imaginary fiction. That's an exactly what uh, an attorney in black dress is. That's exactly what it, an administrator is. They're all official titles, but they don't actually exist. The, the uh, human on the other end, or the psychopath on the other end, exists, of course. But these concepts, these entities, don't really exist. They're fictional entities. And so when you're patronizing those and asking those to represent you, of course, they're required by law to protect you under the laws of infants from harming yourself or each other. That's what the federal is They're a fiction at law that law means to lay down to, and if you lay down to their authority, they got you. Right, right, immediately. And, and it's all up to you whether or not you consent or patronize this thing. 
And um, Jesus said that most profoundly in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, maintaining uh, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And he says, you can only fornicate by giving your body to a landlord. And then in the next breath, he says, God hath both raised up the Lord God, so shall he raise us up by his own power. And when you go to the Constitution and look at Article 1, powers vested in the, uh, the United States Senate and House of Representatives in Congress assembled. And God has vested authority in the Lord God. And of course, the you know opposite of that would be divested. Stop patronizing that thing. Stop purchasing from the law merchant. Stop buying licenses to be for, for, for Pete's sake. So, I wanted to play. What did you want me to play earlier, Truckin? I need to go no. get a drink. Well, you, can, you, can you get that? Uh, we will not go quietly right. by Don Hanley because. I, you know, I'm not really an Eagles fan. I like Jill Walsh a lot. I'm not a big Don Haley fan. But that one there, that that's that's a good statement. And, you know, when I used to play that one in a band awesome. as a drummer, I really enjoyed playing that one because okay. it, it just uh, rocks, All in right. my opinion. Well, it's five minutes. It's not my usual mo. you know. About five minutes. Yeah, I know. It's a long one, yeah. Five and a half minutes, some, folks. We'll be back then. Stick around. And you're listening to These Changing Times Radio at These Changing Times T I M E Z Radio dot Ning dot com. Uh, we are a listener supported radio station where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at These Changing Times Radio dot Ning dot com. That's Times with a Z. And click on our support button there for uh, to donate for Patty. Patty keeps us on the air and we're so appreciative and uh we are low on funding, of course, as always. We're always low on funding. I Absolutely. mean, come on. The Confederacy is... BBG, they have all the funding in the world. The BBG yeah. has international control of all civil media. We, and all the little monsters. We do this with no money, and they do this with hundreds of thousands and millions and billions. Absolutely. Sir, so you want to talk about some uh, Massachusetts news that you were sharing earlier? It was kind of interesting to uh, see the original 13 colonies imploding on themselves. Okay, yeah, we'll do the attorney surety roundup news, I guess, here then, since I'm on the search engine feature for searching attorneys, attorneys arrested within the last 24 hours. So breaking from the 29th in Lowell, a newly licensed attorney working for the Middlesex Sheriff's Department was arrested Thursday for allegedly selling marijuana at uh, Tewsbury, uh, T E W K S B U R Y, Tewsbury convenience store. The Lowell wow. Sun reports Emmanuel K. Flaris, 31, of Lowell, allegedly sold marijuana to a man at Tewsbury uh, uh, Police as Tewsbury Police watched. Wow. Police said they had surveillance set up at the store, the scene of possibly uh, a possible drug activity, and watched as a man entered Flaris's car for a few moments and left. Police stopped and the man um, stopped the man and found he was holding eight grams of marijuana and said he bought from Flaris. Detectives then detained Flaris and searched his car. Police said they found 36 grams of marijuana as well as suboxone, a oipoid substitute in the back seat. Flaris entered pleas of not guilty to possession of a Class D substance with the intent to distribute possession of a Class D substance and possession of a Class B substance in Lowell District, uh... District Court Friday. He oh. will return to court May 22nd. Flores had recently passed the bar and was a temporary employee of the Sheriff's Department. Spokesman for the Middlesex Sheriff's Peter K. 
Pout Toy Giant and Flaris has since been terminated. Aww. That's like this so the mom. sheriff, whatever that last name, C O U T O U J I A N. Let's see, that's a challenge for me. Pout the Giant. I guess may be approximately correct. Anyways. They might care about that if they're defending the title, but we don't give a rat's ass. Now I'll hit the old back button and try to get back to my start page feature. <laughs> <laughs> Enhanced by Google. Yeah, we're, we're low budget. We're low budget, folks. Yeah, this is pretty low budget. When my best working... Uh, computer for audio is running Vista Business. That's pretty sad. Okay. Uh, let's see. Judge Joe Brown again. That comes back up and uh, that was fourth hilarious. on the search. That was hilarious. He he sat there. He was running a PR campaign. You know, normally what happens is the other actors in the show they start presenting babies to kiss and all of these things. And no, and they turned on him and charged him with contempt. I thought that was very interesting because he's up for uh, uh, district attorney. So apparently the uh, the people are not buying that either. And, and that's, this has been amazing. The uh, downfall of the Southern Poverty Law Center was something so profound. The IALTA trusts are a way of hiding money without paying taxes on it and all of this time it's gone into they call it free legal aid southern poverty law center um i know in washington state just before they attempted on me they moved in the uh, northwest justice project which is a, a legal aid uh, cia presentation and as soon as those are, are removed from uh, humanity things will start feeling a lot better. There'll be less pressure on humanity itself um, because they can't uh, maintain the production anymore. Yes, it's just been a really long week. Busy, busy, busy. Well, this one in Oklahoma, you had one on Oklahoma I thought you brought up earlier. Right, I put it in your Skype. Okay. From the 28th in Oklahoma City, doctor charged with sex crimes also faces civil suits from former patients. Right. Apparently uh, he was, you know, really egregious in his actions and, and uh, digitally penetrating uh, patients and, and doing things that were so horrifyingly um, wrong. Just wrong. But that's what doctors do they injure people to bring them into diagnoses and and um, allow the attorneys to cash in on these accounts for you grand jury patrons grand jury finds Cleveland County Commissioner violated state law and road project yeah because it, it, they're bring our grand jury just sounds good they still don't have any evidence. The attorneys don't give them evidence except for what they want. To right, it's all star diseases. Right, so it's just another ring or like a judge, but it sounds really good. Grand jury sounds really, really good and, and big and, and important. Grand jury. Okay, there's one here. Oklahoma City attorney arrested, accused of lewd acts, but it's a video. Good. Good. Bring it on, new shirties. Ludax. They, they've done that over and over and over again this week. Uh, let's see. Oklahoma City Police sees dozens of items from man accused of impersonating an officer. Commercial crimes. What was he doing? Why are they coming up against him? You know, I'll have to look into that more. Rest made 1992 deaths of two women and girl in Oklahoma. I can't find the headline story that the search engine came up for, which uh, said uh, mental sex is. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Oklahoma City Police sees dozens of items for man accused of impersonating an officer. Oklahoma City attorney arrested, accused of lewd acts. Okay, that was the lewd acts one. 
Okay, that one turned out to be a video, so didn't want to listen to it to get the information. We'll follow up on that. More to come later. Yeah. District Attorney, three Massachusetts high school students arrested for sex. Let's talk about students arrested for sex. Um, three Somerville, Massachusetts high school students have been arrested. 16-year-old juvenile males were arrested Friday by Massachusetts State Police. Hmm. Must have been getting frisky on school grounds or something. I don't know. I had to read. I'm just reading the headlines. No, maybe the principal that was charged with, um, he was charged pretty much as an accomplice recently in Indiana. The um, judge upheld that uh, charge. <laughs> Did you see that one in the UK, the nurse charged with murdering patients? Yes. So she became the fall guy for the medical industry, and it's just sad to see, but I'd like to see more directors charged for these things. Yeah, well, you know, maybe I should go back to that story and see. Nothing else was really hitting my radi radar on the second page here. I mean, so many of these, I mean, they stack the whole deck, you know, they're all about how bad citizens are, and it's been that way for so long, you know, I mean, we are seeing an uptick in the number of attorney and judges and police charges. Psychiatrists. And psychiatrists, educational teachers, uh, uh, teachers administrators, and you know, whoever's on state employee. Um, this was our window of opportunity because we knew that Nazi Germany was coming again and we knew that uh, they'd have to cut the overhead after they went into all of this um, you know bankruptcy crap in the Obama administration and Bush administration and um, we just took that opportunity you know like Jeff used to say F him he was just so Ticked off, and now you know. I don't know. I just wish she was here sometimes, you know. Yeah, this is sad that I never even got to learn from him. He's an amazing uh, individual, amazing soul. No, he's the only one that ever took me on. Here, here I am. I'm just like this, whatever, and um. Oh my gosh, she would just yell at me, tell me to get my head out of my butt, over and over again. Every time I tried to balk or run or hide or whine or complain about all of these things and, and everything else or feel sorry for myself, he'd tell me to get my head out of my ass. <laughs> but it kept me going, you know. I don't think I'd be here without him. I'm trying to find this one. The headline reads, Rice. You please make charges, no, make changes after controversial arrest. Judge resigns over allegations. She texts prosecutor from bench during trial. Right, they do that a lot. They text each other or, or uh, use their computers to communicate, like through Skype or other alternative. That's in Houston. Messengers. By the way. Right. And, and Which, you know, Houston, as you know, as far as looking at this in a traditional sense with the states, you know, Texas uh, has, uh, you know, at least an appearance of a smaller form of government. I, I don't know. Right. It looks like it. But I mean, they're spread out. There's a Texas, lot of people in the big cities, and right. population-wise, they're big state, but there's a lot of open area in Texas. Right, but Texas is one of the ones that teach the session, and we should see from the union and all of this garbage, and they're a major, major, major hub for the child sex trafficking industry because of its location. So it kind of trying to lay low. Right. That's what Rick Perry is. Rick Perry is traded mm. as the Department of Health and yeah. Human Services. Yeah, I was going to say, Rick Perry is traded as the Department of Health and Human right. Services. That is just unbelievable. Right. Uh, will he get elected next term? I hope not. <laughs> I pray to God that sheep will listen. We, well, we don't even want any more elections. Well, it's or like... Back Any of these fucktards hanging around here, they're all Congress. Right. right. 
Well, in 2010, when they killed Nancy, they got all of our evidence. Rick Perry had all of our evidence against Rick Perry and the Plano School District uh, uh, that was sexually abusing children. Uh, then, of course, everybody knows what happened to Nancy. Nancy was murdered. Um, come along, fast forward to 2012, and finally I found somebody to pick it up, and that was Jerry Dobbin. So we did uh, a couple of shows with Jerry Dobbin, and I was scheduled to go on the next week, and I'll be damned if within that week he wasn't charged with molestation of false allegation, and the judge restrained him from using the Internet and shut down his examiner site. And it was very interesting to watch that ordeal all the way from start to finish. We have evidence that a teacher was sexually abusing a child. In his IEP report, the teacher had said she was undressing the child, taking pictures, and the child got in trouble because he was running around away from her. He didn't want to be in that position. And then later on, of course, uh, Department of Health and Human Services get involved and treat the two children, it was twins, uh, they treated the two children both with, uh, for sexually uh, transmitted disorders, uh, diseases, and um, the only one around was their adopted mother that had sexually transmitted diseases. And so all of these things were all in, in line with politics. Rick Perry was fully aware and, and kept abreast the whole time and um, you know others in the administration when we first brought it to the attention of the school the law enforcement said oh the school's going to investigate so then the school came back after its investigation and said we don't find any sexual abuse and then of course George Alvin's taken out his site is taken down and all of these things occur and, and um, well, just a reminder that's uh, when they killed Nancy, we were working on the same case. Hey, here's one that just came up. It's pretty interesting. New York police arrest 42 over 642K in alleged welfare fraud. Syracuse residents. Sharena Taylor stands accused of stealing the greatest amount, 71441 Two others are accused of stealing more than 30000 Four more are said to be taken 20000 each. Forty-two people in all were arrested. There are a few frauds more uh, egregious, um, egregious than people who apply for and use public assistance benefits when they are not eligible. District Attorney William Fitzpatrick told the media they are not only stealing from tax-paying citizens, they hurt those that truly need public assistance. Right, and everybody in Oh, this, my goodness. So this is basically right. just... We need uh, to charge him and hold him accountable for insurance fraud. Yeah. He's making the claims on those things. As a prosecutor, he's coming in on an insurance complaint, and he's saying, well, these people are bad. Well, those people are supposed to be on general welfare. Right. According to the... What, uh, what about the general well, welfare here? Right, so... Send me that on Skype, and we'll take care of it this week. This is um, That's what our function is. Isn't that evidence enough? It's it's on the mainstream. I'm sure that could be. I don't know if I call this um, mainstream. This comes from um, what the hell is this? Um, I don't know. Advertisement reads: "The barber currency of the apocalypse." <laughs> what the hell can I leak if I got here? Oh. The R. Let's see here. The SGT Report. Wow. Dot com. Well, find it somewhere else if it's out there. Uh, yeah. I'll give it to you, but. I thought it was something else when I was reading that. Um, like I said, they stacked the deck against us though with the propaganda machine the consensus reality the you know fourth generation warfare you know they've gotten our parents to sell us many of these concepts that are are you know basically plaguing our whole lives in 
uh, it's just really a dark reality, you know. But they make sure they you do. renew your driver's license and your life insurance. Mom was talking to you about life insurance. Yeah. Last year. You haven't paid those premiums in forever, and I mean, it's just like it's so sad. It is so sad. Yeah, I mean, and they should have noticed through uh, one of the E fours. Um, somebody up there, but I I guess I never neglect I neglected so far to send them a direct uh, ordinance. Right, do I need to? We can take care of it through this means, but um, it's just probably uh, should because but, you know talk about your mom. I've never met anybody so beautiful as your parents, and um, you know that's something that when we talk about. You know the the naivety of of humanity and the sheeple and everything else. They're just buying all of these concepts thanks to television programming. And um, Sonia, I would I love spending time with her. And um, just beautiful soul. There's nothing harder than having to watch what we watch occur. Uh, to evidence the United States Incorporated in the action of genocide. But we're almost home. And, um, it's been hell on earth, and that's what purgatory is. You're just stopped in this little question mark box. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, my mother used to allow me a lot of uh, free space, free will, and to, you know, run and discover things for myself. I mean, of course, growing up on essentially a farm with some acreage and um, having the space to run and do things in the wild and whatnot and just... Um, be a kid, so, so I mean, she allowed me to explore things at um, an early age for whatever reason. Um, Mine to, um, you know, our basic rules were, uh, you know, keep up with my chores and. Um, do no harm. Yeah, I mean, do no harm, and um, she was good with that. When I, was like, when I was a bad kid, I, I wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't so good with that, you know, um, do a few mischievous things, but, yeah, so it was good, um, and I loved her, and basically I saw what uh, being patriotic to that medical industry gets you, because, it's my firm belief that she would not be gone if it were not for what they did to her in the medical industry. We have this evidence, too, and this is not something that we're forgetting about anytime soon. Well, we have to realize that generation as well, they were taught to work and work and work and work and earn a retirement and earn insurance, earn medical insurance. And when I was going back through her medical records... Everything that was there was all of these designer concepts sold to her by the medical law, law merchant, you know, and, and all of these things that she had, had earned. They earned these rights. They worked so hard, and, and in their retirement and in their elderly years, they deserved all of these things. They earned them, and they were, uh, again, designer concepts. I was trying so hard. We were trying so hard to reach her. And um, with the medical industry, the uh, television programming, and the priests, and, and all of the presentation, we were not able to reach her. But when you know her, it's like every other human being on this planet. They work so hard, and then they retire. And then they can afford to have these designer cancers and these designer diseases and these di designer disorders because their insurance covers them. And that is a sign of status. That's what they were taught back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. 
And then these yeah, ones. through the likes of Lucille Ball, etc. Right, all of them. And so as we were, you know, Mom and I would go out. Which is probably pre-60s, if I'm not mistaken. Right. But Mom and I would go out to, and, and I hate this, but to the Democratic Club, because she was, you know, a member of that club, and that was another sign of status. And we'd go out and, and, and um, we'd go to bingo every few weeks or whatever. And I'll be damned if, if we weren't sitting there, and here's Mom with her designer cancer, and then other elderly folks with designer cancers, designer brain tumors, designer aneurysms, designer stomach disorders, designer psychological disorders, designer drugs they were on, and these status symbols of, you know, look what I can afford because I'm a widow, my husband worked for whatever, whatever union, and they're taking care of me. And here they're all sick. They're all ill. And um, everybody's in competition because of the status maintained by insurance coverage, which is the epitome of genocide. And we tried so hard to reach her. And this last few months, you know, after we lost mom and, and um, And then Joseph, and then, you know, this last couple weeks we've been updating on other people in mom's circles, and here they are with, with newfangled cancers and these designer things that they're going through, you know, and, and um, it's just a epidemic throughout the society to have these status It's symbols. designer death. It is. It's designer death, and it's sold to us, all of us, through status symbols, symbology, uh, you know, classification itself. And it's something so, well, you know how I was. I mean, I would, I don't go to clubs. I don't go to democratic clubs. And I sure as heck don't play bingo, but I did for mom because that gave us the, the ability to, to talk to her, you know, and communicate outside of, Television programmings and these other groups and and um, she was active in the community. I mean, she was all over the place and so beautiful, <clears> so <throat> profoundly, just beautiful. But yeah, but sadly misguided in that um, doctrination of the left-right paradigm. And um, but. For whatever reason, raising me the way she did allowed me to get out of it. And it took me a while. It's not like it, you know, happened in the, in the first early part of my life. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of lost in all the um, production, too, for quite a while. I mean, even, you know, back in, in the uh, just getting through high school years and that sort of thing. I mean, uh, you know, I used, to, I mean, I was like the first class in my high school year to take computers. <laughs> okay. And then computers, uh, basically followed me ever since. But, uh, you know, I mean the first website when uh, I was cruising the internet on windows 95 was, uh, Jeff Rents, he's been around all that time. So I was always curious about, you know, the alternate presentation of reality anyways that was out there that I knew wasn't coming across the TV even back then. I just I just felt it because it was all, you know, here's a, a reality of, uh, you know, that we're given to you and... So you should just believe how this thing, this is how things are. And, and even back then, so I, I didn't really buy that. But, you know, even Rance, though, who was actually, as it turns out, you know, <laughs> I can't say he's any better or any different in his own way than, than, than uh, Ella Jones in a way. Because we know how the full spectrum dominance program works, and it is about controlling Every facet. Everything. 
Here's, of here you are. your presentation at CIA production. Right. And here, you're just the prime example of, you know. But then, I, you know, I got, I got away from all the UFOs and the New World Order right. stuff, you know, we for quite a while. Just got into sheep land. Well, we all have to go through that. It's part of the experience. How do we see the contrast if we don't see both sides of the coin? And that's something that a lot of people, you know, they don't contemplate when, when I'm speaking and I'm teaching and everything else. I had to go through this same thing. And, and worse, because I'm about the most naive person I've ever met. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant because I'm, I'm innocent. I do act like a child. I'm very, very impulsive. Um, I measured what I have to be when I'm forced to be. Yeah, but unlike a lot of people out there, when you get slapped around, you learn from it. Right. Some people just took, like to, need to take it and take it and take it. I had to, too. I had to take it for, for um you know what 30 years 36 years and and still I was hoping for something else I I didn't want to see this I didn't want to see all of this going on you know there's an old saying that goes back to my <laughs> great-grandfather at least that you know if we really wanted to have a good government you kill all the lawyers and politicians every seven years or something like that they were saying but it was it was in jest, but uh, Shakespeare said the same. He yeah, get rid of them. He called them all court gestures, gestures, uh, pedophiles. He called attorneys. Uh, and what do we see the major, you know, the majority of the charges coming down the pike here for is uh, for all these low lights, anyways. The uh, lower of the food chain attorneys are getting nabbed for uh, pedophilia. Senator to appeal, he got uh, that one in Illinois got busted for child state pet. senator. And he was passed. But there we law. have the federal state cannibalizing the national state on that. Now we we have to have a right. I it seems like the national state is really taking a beating right now. Right. It's like there has to be a next chapter and the the national state strikes back or something i don't know but this is it began with the reclamation acts and the federal state has been coming against the national state for a long time to subjugate it and now is the point where at where the national state is realizing that they're the fall guy for congress rather than the other way around congress is the one that commissioned the national state it said you follow my rules and you do things my way and you'll get funding. Well, they've been doing it their way. However, Congress separated everything out into the United Nations and all of these different venues of funneling embezzled funds. And all in all, they don't want to take the brunt for this. They don't want to take the update accountability from the national state. However, they're the ones that commission the national state. I'm not backing off of Congress. I'm not stopping until they kill me or I get rid of Congress. It has to be gone. That thing is, is so profoundly sick and horrifying. It, it traffics human beings and facilitates genocide. And that's something that, you know, most people didn't see back in October and November. Is it mom raised you you are so beautiful she was absolutely amazing you know talking to her she was absolutely amazing yeah um, yeah we should have met her mom and she went way before uh her time in my opinion um in some sort of uh um you know turned out to be diagnosed with alzheimer's mm. Usually that's caused by the medication or aluminum or any number of things that they're ingesting. And, but it was... She probably drank a lot of the water without a filter around here. Right. She grew up... And it was right around here she lived her whole life. Right. It's just... And um, you know how bad the water is. Oh, my God. She's like... Well, it's worse than septic. It's like... Um, I don't know, it's not a metallic flavor, it's something else, and it's got texture to it, and, you know. Grandpa drank the same water, lived to be uh, 90 or 89 anyways. Did he drink? But they still, and they killed him the same way with the Halperin. Yeah. Uh, he was at hospice in the same yeah. way. 
Always. It's a guarantee. That's a guarantee on insurance. And a lot of people will say, oh, they were just old. No. They were murdered by the medical industry itself. Yeah, just on a prima facie value, you can you, you can follow the stories. Went to hospice, died one week later. Went to hospice, died two weeks later. Right. And or if you're really tough, told, maybe, yeah. you know, how long did, uh, you know, uh, Joseph Reynolds last. He was he was tough and as good health, you know, as you could be at that age. And, Got him in there, and they killed him people. off, and it still took him a month. Or, right. And it, but it was guaranteed to happen due to guarantee insurance. Right. And that's what always is. Cocksuckers. <laughs> Everybody wants to save the freaking Freemasons. Right. That was funny tonight. So you know, the Freemasons, though, I mean, them... them SOBs, they're still in league with Congress, though. As are the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Templar, uh, the, the Skull and Bones, 322 Club. Well, what it is, is, you know, when we were growing up, my grandfather was a 32nd degree Scottish Rite. So when we were growing up, we looked at him like he was immortal because he could do anything. You know, I... I up in real estate developing and and um, mobile home sales and all of these things and different ventures and whatever else so he could just pay somebody and have stuff done you know inspections on homes um you pay off the judge judge knew uh stephen michaels at the time was an, an accountant he wasn't a judge yet um john and john motts um and then we had Rick Kimbrough, which was the, quote, family attorney, he's the municipal judge, right? So everything's all sewn up, as long as he's got a lot of money, right? So the minute he goes where he's about to retire and run off with his own money, well, then he's all of a sudden diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and he's killed off within six months. And this follows um, within, uh, no, within four months, because this followed Donnie. Donnie was murdered on on um, August 21st of 2000, and then Papa, um, they killed him on May, I think it was May 11th of 2001, so it wasn't very long after um, Donnie, and then, of course, within the following months, it was like back-to-back -back family members to get rid of everybody and get rid of all of the, the heirs, but you have to go backwards into the schematics. So here he was. He was given a title, uh, 32nd degree mason. Woohoo! He's walking around. He's a developer, hanging around, chumming around with um, all of the all their uh, big wig developers and bondsmen. You know, uh, he was uh, in business contract with the Eggleys, which were bondsmen, and um, you know he had the hotel Dark Horse Inn and and uh, mobile home parks and all of these things that he developed. Uh, he started Cliff Septic in '48, and then it franchised out. So he was he was all over the Lower Yakima Valley in, in Washington State. He owned all of his properties. However, the family attorney was the county commission, so he was sitting there passing code, and he'd say, "Well, this is illegal, Cliff," and then he'd say, "Well, I'll defend you against that, Cliff." Then they go into court, and here's the judge, the immunity judge, family attorney, sitting on the corporate council, defending him and making the law that so he's defending him against. So it doesn't matter what title anybody has, the attorney will raise it. It doesn't matter if you're the Pope, it doesn't matter if you're a Catholic priest, it doesn't matter if you're a freaking bishop, president, legislator, as we're seeing now. If the attorney wants your stuff, it's going to take your stuff. That's what an attorney does. So... You have to divest all title if you want to hold them county, hold them accountable to the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. Right, that's it. Period. Yeah, no, end the story. There's not a. You know, title. if you want to live by private acts, acts of commerce where you can be forgiven. Lady pushes husband off cliff after eight days of marriage and gets thirty years. So right. after thirty years, she's forgiven. Right. For killing somebody. And with Papa, you have to, you know, look at. The dynamics and um, everything. He was raised, I don't know how many times at the end there, um, as a developer. He bought a racetrack in Sunnyside, Washington, the racetrack in Sunnyside, Washington. And um, he was going to develop that and turn it into a park. Well, it abutted up against a golf course, so it was prime real estate. So he goes in there, and the EPA starts coming in. Oh, we got some anonymous calls. You're kicking up too much dust. Dust. 
So the Environmental Protection Agency comes in and finds him for kicking up dust. So these attorneys are just cashing in hand over fist, redistributing the estate. But throughout all of that time, they criminalized all of the males in our family and killed them off. So by the time they killed Papa, there was only girls left. The others were civilly dead because of felony convictions or whatever else. There was no heirs except for my psychopathic mother and her sister. Yeah, so well, have and sadly as it's turning out, you know, mudslides and West Coast uh, Fukushima radiation, uh, it's not even that great place to be, in my opinion, at this time, uh, but um, maybe that was just God's plan. I, think, I believe so. I mean, it, it, this is part of my education, my experience, and the way that the female learns. I don't have logic. I'm impulsive. I'm a child. I don't have a natural predator. There's not supposed to be an attorney uh, standing before me and, and, and uh, altering my heading at every time I turn around. And um, in that, I shouldn't have to worry about this crap. I shouldn't have to worry about any of this crap. There's no such thing as code. An attorney promotes code in statute and legislation. And, um, you know, if, if anybody wants to argue that still, after all this time and listening to our audios and what's going on and everything else, go to the 1832 Nullification Act, a Nullification Proclamation by Andrew Jackson. He determined that it was a contempt of court to argue statute or legislation. Good old Andrew Jackson, your buddy. Period. I mean, it was all over in 1832, and, and people are still arguing statute. Oh, I want my rights. Wait, you owe me my rights. And then, you know, of course, um, today, oh, my goodness, there was like a five-way call going on with law enforcement, our law enforcement, their law enforcement, um, bodies on the ground, bodies elsewhere. And um, so I'm in, I'm in the middle, of course, as a clerk, and all of these people are talking around me, and there's... One, I don't know who it was, but then um, this male voice just pops in. He's like, yeah, the judge is supposed to be our trustee. And so, of course, I stopped for like two minutes out of all of this time working in this case. And I'm explaining, you know, what what uh, the judge's oath is and everything else. But it's just like this indoctrination, it just doesn't end. It reaches all corners of everywhere. And it's so hard to deprogram, you know, and as I'm explaining this, of course, he gets huffy and he got off the phone really quick. But it's like, you know, what do you do except for just keep teaching and hoping somebody's going to hear, hoping they'll hear, um, you know, because this isn't my life. This is your life. I've already done my dogs. My estate is, <laughs> you know, and I, it, it's just uh, I, I cannot explain the lack of torture. I have a lot of stress now because I choose all of these things. I choose to be the clerk of courts. I choose to be the United States. And these things are burdens that I would rather have around my neck than around a child's neck, uh, number one. Number two, I haven't been tortured since I did the docs. I know that we talk a lot about all of these happenings. Um, they're actually nothing in comparison to what I've already been through and what I went through as a female citizen, licensed driver, teacher, doctor, and all of these bullshit titles that gave them the um, authority to draw these easements through my body and own me as if I was a slave. It, it has been profoundly freeing and, and um, you know, everything will be well shortly but um i don't know Sorry. it may suck in the meantime <laughs> in the meantime i love that word the most now you know it may just it. suck for a little while longer but you know we did all we could do i mean really we gave everybody a fighting chance here if you just would get the word out and believe it because i know it yeah we got, yeah, we bring in the stories and that support what we're saying, so. But that's something else, too. First, or Second Corinthians 13. I mean, if we, I mean, if, if, if they come and kill us, it's like they're breaking their own rules that they set up to create the system in the first place. Right. Everything that I've written actually has the 
opposite of what I've written is the same exact same thing. So we went up against the charters and we said, well, you're doing this and you're human trafficking using this charter. Now their obligation is either to take the accountability or admit that the charter is all bullshit in the beginning and you don't have to follow it anyway. It has the same effect both front and back. And um, to all the agents that are surrounding us right now, you know, Na 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny they try to sell me things every day. And like, yeah. Have you seen this process? And I'm like, what the freak? Yeah, the biggest comeback is it coming out with the new Cheech and Chong movie after 30 years, finally making another movie. So. Right, and that was major That's indoctrination. It. I loved Cheech and Chong when I was younger, you know, and um, that was so. Such yeah, it was commercial stuff. primes, 27 CFR 72.11. Yeah. Teaching people about In your face, Absolutely. and it's funny. Absolutely. Teaching you about commercial crimes. Teaching you that law enforcement is bad, and they always want to bust you. And oh, what do you think about this uh, Seagal, though, now? You know, he's like, you know, basically um, sucking the Putin pecker. I mean, he's coming out there. The I mean, that's what it amounts to. He's on Russia Today. Which one? The actor? Yeah, Steven really? Seagal. Yeah, I went back to try to watch some of his movies from, from years ago. I mean, this is just and like within the last 24 hours. He's, wow. He's like, uh, yeah, come he's on, as a major supporter, uh, of, supporter of Russia. Right. Yeah. He might he might move there right. out of the country because... Because right. it's not the same thing as the Confederacy. It's the Federation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's selling that concept and that, you know, the paradigm of separation of governments, right? Right. Well, right. but, I mean, he's Katie? basically coming out as a... Uh, Katie did good. She, he's got a... I mean, everyone's called the Russians communists and stuff. This is a communist country here. Absolutely. Since it's, 1938. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's so profound and, and you and, know... Uh, I mean, the court, it goes. Katie did well with It goes Board of Governors, it. Insurance, and then Courts. Right. And the courts are all communist, you know. And, and, then, and the nexus is that, you know, the same attorneys that work in the courts own the. Hospitals. You know, the, 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 well, they've got investments in the insurance. Youth groups. A lot of them. Yep, youth groups, hospitals. And the Board of Governors is just the attorneys on top. Right, that's it. So it's attorneys, attorneys, attorneys. And that's the separation of power, folks. It goes attorney, 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 attorney legislating, attorney maintaining the judiciary. There's that constitution at right. work for you. And an attorney in the black dress. <laughs> Under, well, basically court. the Commerce Clause, part of the constitution anyways. Right. And it was never because the original contract ended at Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3. The Commerce Clause. Right. Well, the, the Commerce, Commerce Clause, clause was, itself is after um, no, was no Bills of Attainder. Section 8, Clause 3, wasn't it? It was the Commerce Clause, which allowed them to do whatever they wanted to. However, the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity has always been there. That's just the the um, truth itself. You know, if you're harming people, you don't have immunity. Okay, well, I can't. used I yeah, I used to be a constitutionalist, you know, but then again, I was a dumbass then. So was I. I was a patriot. I was a patriot hard. The the forever uh, retarded patriot hard. My grandfather was a veteran, my father was a veteran, my first husband was a veteran, and I was so patriotic to this thing, and I couldn't believe, you know, wh why our veterans weren't treated uh, the, the way that is stated, and, and so I grew up on a sailors, uh, soldiers and sailors act, caring about it all the time, and then as I become an adult and I realize, oh my gosh, these people are coming out of the military after active service to maintain their DD-214s at the Register of Deeds. As a deed, they're subjecting themselves as a citizen after that. They're not getting anything that was promised to them in the Soldiers and Sailors Act. And in fact... Getting up their DD... DD-214s. 214s. Right. 
And so I start looking at the actors that are doing these things, okay? So you have this presentation of John McCain out there, and he's been a prisoner of war and all of these other bullshit presentations. He's the one actually taking benefits. He, he's Hank Hill's dad. Right, he's taking benefits from the veterans the whole time. He's saying, I'm a good guy. I've been a prisoner of war. He crashed his own planes, and then he's made it lauded as a hero, and he's done more shit towards veterans than Obama and Obama's the worst one ever ever other than McCain and if you go through McCain's congressional record you'll find out what I'm talking about through the Reclamation Act. He's at least nobody everything. claps at his speeches abroad anymore. Well he needs to be the one on uh, <laughs> the uh, missile you know McCain needs to be in a bikini in a bikini straddling the uh, Missile, and we'll call him Hanoi McCain, and I think that'll get him even more, uh, you know, face time out there, and maybe he'll, people will hate him less than they do now. But he's absolutely foul. Him and Leahy, Leahy is about the the worst pedophile there is besides Biden, Joseph Biden, and um, everybody. Yeah, has but to open you know, eyes. can it? In, in the darkest corner sense, Ron and Rand Paul are the most evil of all because they're selling you that Congress is good. They're just a presentation. Be nice to them. Aww. The doctors. Yeah, doctors and senators. They're in league. Doctors are in league. Right. They are legion. Absolutely. Re-legion. They're, they're re um, presenting you in the image of you that is the original. So everything. I mean, after all, Rand Paul is suing Obama. Yep. I mean, wow, Absolutely. man, he's really looking out for us, bringing him into law like that. It's just it's bullshit. It's all freaking bullshit. Absolutely. Presentation after presentation after presentation. Through the 1947 um, National Security Act, and then you know when I went back, I mean they're delivering they're delivering people up to the law merchant on a mass scale. Absolutely. You know, like Monograph the other day, selling people on the idea to go to small claims court to file a complaint against uh, the government for poisoning their water <laughs> with fluoride. And the, and the reasoning was, oh well, they won't fight that and you'll get all these little rulings in small claims court for what you know, purpose you're and you're just entering into law getting you on the um, law merchants books right, right. and you're Push maintaining your spreadsheet you're you're maintaining his loss because you're selfish uh, Jesus is actually the person in front of you or the person you see that needs your help and um, God is the one that helps Jesus and so if you're not acting as to your authority, you're always under the law merchant selling you these rights and benefits while they're protecting you under the laws of infants. And so all of this time, everybody's not been protecting the other you. That is me, the, the me that Jesus says, uh, take up your cross and follow me. He was The relative me is the person in front of you. And what... You know, what was so profound to me um, last year is when you needed me. And so I just showed up. I just dig in my heels and, and I'm like, okay, good to go. I volunteer, you know, and then um, after that we, uh, we were able to evidence all of the criminal activity because I'm supposed to be following you. I'm not supposed to be protecting me. That's not Jesus. That's not God. That's not any... Um, relative human state to protect the self. The self is a fictional creation. The ego, the superego, and the id. It doesn't exist. So if you're not looking out of your own eyes and protecting the one in front of you, you're not doing anything. You're just being selfish. So another thing about Monograph, then, at least according to Hell Wars, is that he says that uh, Monograph speaks Russian. Right, and that indicates that he's probably, you know, some type of agent 
Russian Federation, I mean, it, <laughs> that was one of the most profoundest since the fall here, um, that uh, Russian FBI agent with the uh, Russian Federation, the one that was found dead by natural causes, he accidentally locked himself into a duffel bag, but he didn't leave any fingerprints. And there was something outside. recent within this last week I meant to I'll look up too. There was an FBI agent that ended up dead. Uh, right. Did you happen to catch that story? No, I didn't see that one. All uh, right, yeah, I'll have to bring that back up. That was um. Oh, I just caught that on the Jericho report. Well, it's the same thing with um, what's his name? Uh, Infowars. Uh, but I mean, I'm, yeah, there's 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 tons of these YouTubers out there that are just. Are just huge, you know, and you wonder how they got that way. Agents. Okay, if you if you go and if you're serious about looking at these things and everything else, I watch your page, you know, and then all of a sudden I'll go over to uh, headline news, CNN headline news, right? CNN you know, another news, another point though. Turner. Another point before I forget, he, you know, said uh, that the M H three seventy plane was in Israel. No, no, wait a minute. No, no, he said it was at the CIA base in the, uh, yeah, that's right. He said CIA base, uh, well, United States secure air base out there in the Indian Ocean, I believe. Again, Elvis was there as a pilot. Yeah. And then, you know, Marilyn Monroe was in the bathroom when that plane went down. And so was Buddy Holly and the rest of his band and... All of these things that uh, the CIA has always produced. But, um, you know, getting back to this monograph fellow and, and all of these things, when you go out over to CNN Headline News on YouTube, they have the same viewership as your page. But then you run over to, um, what's the name, Alex Jones Monograph, all of these things, and their numbers are like out of this world, right? Well, you can. I can. Yeah, Dutch Sins has 300 views in like the first minute or something. Right, he puts the video right, out. Right, and that and that indicates some kind of program. When we were playing with scripting and bots and everything else, we could create numbers in the chat room. We could create whatever, uh, whatever we programmed into the script, and it would create that for us—the illusion of views, the illusion of whatever. And that was, um, the purpose was for uh, marketing. Their original purpose was for marketing. And that's exactly what they do. Oh, there's like 100,000 views on here. I better trust this guy. Because that guy over there only has 300 views. Well, you know, look around and use your relativity. And it's like so profound. Um, the, um, well, I don't know. There's a lot of comments, too, on that. So I, I think people are just... Well, there's a lot, a lot of people that are um, lured into the smooth talking voice and selling you this idea about, you know, some um, esoterical concepts like harp. And, but once again, he doesn't talk about the diesel coils, which I think is the big uh, elephant in the China store, if you ask me. Absolutely. Uh, the fact that uh, Rat Toot 1009 won't stop talking about a particular enablement act of 1871 called the Organic Act or the Act of 1871 is a uh, red flag to me. Right. The These fact that uh, Alex Jones will not point the finger at Congress and say it's Congress right. uh, and keep harping on Congress is a big red flag to me. The, you know, the fact that uh, you know, so many of them out there that are leading you down to, you know, the constitutional theory aspect of things, patriotism, um, you know, they're telling you the system's wrong and at the same time selling you back into the system. So, questions are good, but are the questions misdirecting is the question. Right. And that's what a disinfo agent does. It, it feeds you disinfo that's believable in some way. You know, it sounds plausible, maybe, you know, um, 
that, that's your function, you know. And I trusted. I Alex see. Jones. I, I, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet either. It was over fifty minutes, but David Ike put out another video today on his YouTube channel. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, David Icke he was what off a long time ago. I'm gonna put on some Space Station. Right? Well, for a minute, for a little break while I get a drink. You want to take a break? Uh, I was gonna say, why don't we just cut on out of here? Because I mean, cool. really, how much more can you say? Um, right. Don't you gotta get? Some, don't you ever sleep? I know we need sleep. I just wanted to update everybody and. You know, get a chance to actually unwind. I mean, this week alone was so, it's one of the busiest. And um, I guess we'll just cut it off here. It's uh, 4.10, so an odd hour. Let me go. I mean, you can take us out with a tune or so. What, what, what tune would be the um, out of appropriate the thing? I, uh, I, I really like that Don Henley. That was nice to hear that again because that, right? that song just. Really, like I said, I mean, there's these one-hit wonders, but you know, Don Hanley is more than that. But to me, that was like one of his finest. Well, what do you want to hear? Uh, um... We cut off um, Double Agent Short. You know I'm a huge Rush fan, but uh, I don't know what kind of summarizes this whole thing up. Uh, who made who? You probably don't have a Pharaoh of the Kings, though, do you? Either. No. Look. Or, that might be a little bit too esoteric for the, um, it's a great song, but, oh, how about some, uh, Iron Maiden always works, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, yeah, sure, that's my favorite, that, that always reminds me of, of our court, and, um, what it took to get there, bye everybody, We'll talk to you soon. Be well. And remember, support the station. We're not here if you're not supporting us. Be well. Oh, might help if I turn that off.